Good morning, everyone. Um, today, we're going to um, finish up Alpha 61A, and then we're going to review, which is, um, so that's what we are, that's what our plan. So looking ahead for this week and next week, okay, ne next week will be the last week. So today, we're going to finish 61A and review for the whole semester. Monday, I will continue to review. If you have any questions, we're gonna answer your questions. And the final will be available June 8th, which is Tuesday, okay? T-U-E-S-D-A-Y, Tuesday, June 8th through Friday, June 11th. And so that's the last day of school. So you don't have the whole weekend to do your exams. You have only three days. So that's the plan for uh, your final exam. And your grades, <clears throat> there are a couple of things I'd like to explain to you about your grades. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> okay, about your grades. Your grades on Canvas is only an approximation. It's only an approximation. If you have missed a lot of quizzes, if you, or if you have missed one or two quizzes, you may find that, your, you, you, that the, the, the estimated grades on your gradebook is not accurate, okay? Uh, what happened is that if you miss a quiz, that quiz should be zero. But the canvas does not set the zero for you automatically. I need to go in there to set the zero for that particular quiz. So I haven't get a chance to do that yet throughout the semester, right? Uh, so if you miss some quizzes, then your grade is not accurate. If you have done every quiz, you have a score in every quiz, and then you're fine. That grades, you, you, you know, canvas grades probably is pretty close to what your grades is. But because I gave extra credit here and there, okay? So you're gonna have another extra credit quiz this week. This is gonna be the last quiz. And this is also gonna be an extra credit quiz. Um, I believe we already have, we already have, let me open up a canvas. I think we already have uh, 25 quizzes. So number 26 will be counted as extra credit, will be counted as extra credit, okay? So first of all, if you miss a quiz, okay, so I, I wanna write it down. If you miss a quiz, that quiz score need to be set to zero manually by the teacher, which I haven't done, okay? By the teacher. If that grade is not set to zero automatically, uh, it's not set to grade manually by the teacher, then your grades reflected on your canvas is not accurate. Because in the final grades calculation, I will be setting those missing quizzes to zero manually. To, because that hasn't been done, so your grades on Canvas is not accurate. So I want you guys to understand that, okay? In the past, some student will come to us say, oh, my Canvas looks like I'm 80%. How come I failed the class? Well, that's because the grades you missed is not set to zero on Canvas manually by your professors. This is uh, for all the Canvas courses, okay, which is for all the classes because all the classes are in Canvas or online somehow. So please understand that your grades on Canvas is not accurate. It's not accurate. Um, and secondly, okay, you have an extra credit your, your quiz number tw uh, 26 is an extra credit. Okay, this is an extra credit one. 
Okay, so how do I calculate the extra, how do I count the extra credit? Canvas does not do the extra credit for me. Okay, so I need to go in there to, to add up all of your quiz score. Okay, I download and to my Excel and add up all the quiz score. So the sum of quiz, the sum of, the sum of quiz scores, okay, will be divided by 26 because we have 26. But the way I said I'm number 26 is going to be your extra credit. So I'm not going to be dividing by 26. I'm going to be dividing by 25 instead. So your denominator is smaller. So your average will be larger. Does that make sense? So your average score, your average quiz score is calculated instead of dividing by 26, I'm dividing by 25. So that's how you get that extra credit. That how that extra credit is contributed. So that extra credit is contributed to the total. But this needs to be done manually. It cannot be, a, a canvas doesn't have that function to do that. So I need to do that after all the quizzes are complete. Got it? Okay, including number 26. So your quiz number 26 is coming soon. Okay, coming soon. And of course, you don't, we don't know our final grades. So your, your final grades is going to take three days. You don't have the whole weekend. So the three days is, 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 is labeled here from Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Oh, four days. I actually give you four days. Okay, I'm not going to take my word back. It's four days. So you have four days to complete your quiz. And this quiz is, oh, I'm sorry, there's a final exam. The final exam, you have four days. I'm still in the process of preparing for them. So don't ask me how many questions and I don't know how many questions there are and you will find out. You still have three attempts. You have three attempts to do the quizzes, to do that final exam in four days, okay? So this week we have class today, of course, and we didn't have class on Monday because it was a holiday. But next week, you only have class on Monday. You're not going to have class on Wednesday. You're not going to have classes on, on Wednesday. Wednesday class is used for your final exam time. Okay. And each city, you have three attempts. Each sitting is fixed, which is two hours, which is two hours. Okay. So uh, if you have any questions, do you have any questions to ask? Final exam, two hours per sitting. And three attempts. And the highest score will be entered as your final grades. And how the how your final grades is calculated, if you look at the, the home page of Canvas, and we have two formula each formula give you a grade and the higher the higher score is your course is your course grade and will be posted when it will be posted in the week of june 14th which is the 17th week counting from the beginning of the semester week 17 we don't have classes on week 17 so classes school is over on this at the end of 16th but your grades will be posted the following week which day i don't know so don't send me message about grades. You just check your my ECC. And uh, after the grades is done, I will message you and I tell you, uh, and uh, I will tell you, you can check your my ECC. Any questions? So today, let's, let's see. Alpha 61A. Okay, Alpha 61A. Okay. So we're gonna complete this section. We're gonna complete this section. And then that's the last section we're gonna cover for our final exam, for our final exam, okay? Will this be on your final exam? Yes, the answer is yes, okay? So let's finish up Alpha 61A. And then we're gonna, we're gonna review. Wait, what am I doing here? Okay, Alpha 61A. Okay, so let's finish Alpha 61A. Last time, I think we did up to number four, right? 
Did we do? Did we do up to number twenty? Uh, number four. Okay, so we have number five through number ten. Okay, so what are the the principles and properties we learn here? So let's recap what do we have learned about logarithm. Okay, let's recap about what do we have learned in logarithm. Now, besides definition, right? We have learned product rule, quotient rule, power rule. Okay, so let me bring back up the definition as well. Okay, if we bring back up the definition, which we have it somewhere, okay, just going backward, right? So we have covered this much. So this is the definition. Right, so you can see that you, you should, if you need, you should go back to the definition, as uh, go back to those lectures for your review, for your review, okay? So you can play over and over again for any specific sessions that, you know, you don't understand or you need to uh, watch it over and over again. And the next one, the next property I'm, I'm, I'm looking for is this one. Very, very useful property. Okay, so these properties will be assessed. These properties will be assessed uh, on your final exam. Okay, on your final exam. Okay, and then last time we, uh, last, last week, Right, last week and before, since we talk about logarithm, we have covered possible, you know, common mistakes you're being quizzed on, and so on and so forth. Okay, so with that behind us, so, so let's look at number five and number ten. Okay, starting with number five, just to warm up. Okay, so number five, we have log base two of forty minus log base two, five, okay? If you have any questions, please, you can stop me anytime. You can stop me anytime, okay? So in this question, there are actually two different ways to do it. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you, okay? You can use a quotient rule. You can use a quotient rule directly for sure, right? Quotient rule, because here is a subtraction. Right? Subtraction. Subtraction reminds us of quotient rule. So quotient rule. So you can uh, set your quotient rule on the side. Right? And we're going from right to left. Right? So if you like, you can move to the side. You can move the sides. They're all the same. Because left is right, right is left. Right? Quotient rule. And the base here is two. Base here is two. You don't really need to show me these, but you need to know, okay? Your teacher doesn't need to see that. What do, you, what do they need to see? They need to see this piece, okay? They need to see this piece correctly done, okay? And then with the quotient rule applied correctly, and then now you're gonna simplify 40 divided by five, and that's gonna equals to eight. Right, so that's eight. And log base two of eight, that's equals to, what does that equal to? Could someone give me an answer? Could someone give me an answer? I, I, uh, I'm watching, I'm looking at chat. Hello everyone, can, can anybody give me the answer for log base two of eight? I just want to check on you if you guys are paying attention. What is it? No answer? Are you guys there? Are you there? Marcella, what is the answer? Alan? What is the answer? Hmm. 
No answer. All right, I expect you guys to go watch the videos, okay? Watch the recordings. If you're not paying attention here, so now it's three, right? Because three power two is what? It's eight, right? Three power two is eight. So we have, a, we have the, we've done these examples. So two to the power of three is eight. Okay, so even though you log in, I'm not sure if you're still with me, but you can always watch the recording. Okay, so that's number eight. Number six. Okay, number six. Number six, we have three terms. Log base two of six. Oh, did I talk about, I'm gonna show you another way to do it on number five. Yeah, I did say that. I need to honor that, right? I need to keep my words, 15. So let me just finish copying this question. I'm sorry, I got, I got distracted. All right, another way to do it. Okay, so what I want to show you is that there's a different way to do the same question, okay? You see, we use, we use the quotient rule here. We can also use a product rule. How do we use a product rule to solve the same question? Right? Log base two of 40, 40 can be written as five times eight. Five times eight. And we can apply quotient, instead of applying quotient rule, we can apply product rule. We can apply product rule. You see, we can apply product rule here, right? After we apply product rule, what do we get? The base is two. The base is two. When we apply product rule, five is a capital A, eight is a capital B. So basically this is a five times eight five times eight. So this will be five and that will be eight. Does that make sense? So we can use this piece, which equals to log base two, five times eight to replace that guy. Okay, to replace that guy. And then the next expression, you can see these two are opposite. These two are opposite. So that makes zero. Right, so these two are opposite, that makes zero. So we still end up with log base two of eight and that of course equals to three. So there are two different ways to do that. So all the algebraic operations, right, we have learned before, you know, um, adding, subtracting, combining different, you know, combining similar terms. You just, we, in addition to that, we have product rule, quotient rule. A product group quotient. Okay, so now uh, let's look at number six. Number six, we can do it in a variety of different ways. Okay, you can do it as straight as is here. Okay, as in the given order, and you can also shuffle the order. You can also shuffle the order. Okay, for example, if I do it straight out of the order, I would apply quotient rule here, and then I will apply product rule here. Okay, afterwards, right? For example, if I apply quotient rule, right? If I apply quotient rule from, from right to left, right? I will get log base two, log base two, quotient rule, that's gonna be six divided by 15. Okay, I'm not gonna do any redu re reduction yet. I'm plus log base two of 20, plus log base two of 20. Okay, and next, next, we're gonna, we're gonna apply product rule. We can apply product rule. We can apply product rule because log base two, log base two. 
we have one number here, capital A, that's a capital B. So we can apply Prada rule. You see, in the whole process, I'm not in any rush to calculate, to calculate, you know, to reduce it, right? So I'm just gonna keep it six over 15 and multiply 20, okay? As you're getting better, you can go straight from here to there. So you can totally skip this step. Okay, that will be fine. Of course, if you show it, make sure you show it correctly. Okay, so product rule is applied after a quotient rule is applied, or you apply a quotient rule and product, right? And I hope this gets easier for you. And then after that step, you can reduce the inside. Now we can reduce the inside to see what we get, right? 20 is, it can be seen as 20 over one, right? 20 and 15, there's a common factor, which is five, right? 20 divided by five, it's a four. 15 divided by five, that's a three. And six divided by two is a two. And two times eight, a uh, two times four, it's eight. So we get, guess what we get? We get three again. Okay, so you can see we can apply product rule, quotient rule in ways flexible, in ways flexible. Do we have another way to do it? Of course. Do we have another way to do it? We can also use a product rule. We can use a product rule, okay? Watch this. You can use product rule for the whole thing, for the whole thing. Okay, how do we use product rule? Because First of all, there, there are different ways you can use product rule, right? In the current situation, in the current situation, you can move these two, right? You, you can move the plus together because product rule calls for plus and subtracting. So you can change the order of the terms, right? It's more like if you have for example, you have, you have A minus B plus C, and you can totally do A plus C minus B. You can see that? And that's your A, and that's your B minus B, and that's your C, right? So you can, you can move, the, you move the term around, okay? Properly, because if you, if you, every time you move the term around, you have to move the sign along with it. We need to move the sign along with it. Are you guys with me now? Okay. So I would appreciate some interactions with you guys. Okay. So now you can use, instead of quotient rule first, you can use, we can use a product rule first. Okay. So this product rule, we're going to get log base two of six times 20. Six times 20 and then subtracting a log base two of 15. You can see the flexibilities we have, right? We have the flexibilities. Okay, we have the flexibility. And lastly, and we can use a quotient rule, right? So we use a product rule, right? So we use a product rule. And next, we can also use a quotient rule. Left to right, right to left, any which way you want. Any which way you want. Really, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter at all, okay? As long as you organize your term properly, okay? So log base two, and now we have 120 divided by 15. Right, so you can you can also leave it as the multiplication. You don't have to simplify at that point. Divide by fifteen, right? And then you reduce. And needless to say, you should get two. You guess you should get eight. Well, you just reduce it, and this is actually these two are the same numbers, right? So this is going to be eight and equals to one. Equals to one. Thirdly, I'm going to show you another way, one more way, 
one more word. Why do I show you these different ways? Because I want you to learn that you have flexibilities and using these flexibilities, you're gonna, you get to apply product rule, quotient rule in different ways, in different ways. Okay, the third way I'm gonna show you is that you make some splits, right? You see six is two times three, 15 is three times five, 20, hmm, remember? Now you can just do the splitting. You can do the split splitting, okay? Maybe you even get to use the power rule. You could get even use the power rule. So what I want you to see is the flexibility you have, right? For example, here, you can write it as a log base two, of two plus log base two of three product rule minus log base two of 15, right? So here I'm gonna put a bracket because there's a negative sign in front of it. So log base two of three plus log base two of five. And lastly, Lastly, so log base two of four, uh, tw uh, 20, okay? I'm gonna write it as log base two, okay? Of two squared, uh, oh, sorry, this is a plus, okay? Plus log base two of five because two squared is four, four times five is 20. You guys, you, did you guys follow? Do you guys follow me? Maybe I should insert one more step, right? I'm inserting this one more step. You can see the ideas that inside this step, right? This is two times three, we apply product rule, right? Five, uh, five times three, okay? Or three times five is 15. 20, we have four times five, but four is two squared. Okay, four is two squared. Okay, so you can split, you can split. Okay, and I, I show you three ways, actually there are more ways if you get the idea, right? It's just for the fun of it. Why I encourage you to do something like this? Because by this, by, by trying different ways, you will be complete a master of these three rules, product rule, quotient rule, and power rule. And you will not make those other mistakes we have addressed. Okay, we have addressed. So now uh, we, we know log base two of two, that's equals to one. Log base two of three, that cannot be simplified, right? Easily, you have to use a calculator, but stop using calculator. And next, I'm gonna open up the parentheses and then we get another log base two of three, right? And subtracting log base two of five, right? And over here, I'm gonna use the power rule over here. So that's gonna be two times log base two of two and plus log base two of five. And look what we got. We got the opposites and we got another opposites, right? They're opposites. So therefore we, we got a bunch of zeros. So we get rid of those zeros. So we have one plus two times log base two of two. And that of course that's equals to one. So in the end, we get three as well. I want you to see flexibility and I want you to see, I want you to practice using the, because using these properties, product rule, quotient rule. We pointed out the common mistakes and we also practice the power rule. Okay, so, so these rules are really at the center Okay, these rules are really at the center of our practice and make sure you use them correctly. We use them correctly. Okay, so um, 61A, 
We did number six. And there are four more questions. There are four more questions. Would you like to practice? I want you guys to practice, okay? Number seven. Okay, log a bit, a common log. So here we have one over square root 1,000. Number eight, your turn, okay? Your turn. I'm gonna give you a little time so you can start first. So I'm going to be just behind you a little bit. Number nine, and of these four questions, we're gonna to get to review. Okay, log base three of 18, three, sorry. Subtracting log base three of two. Uh, number 10, is log 35 plus, okay, log 35 plus log one sevens plus log two. Okay, your turn, your turn. Okay, these are the rules, definitions, product rule, quotient rule, Common mistakes, make sure you have your notebook in front of you so you can find those reference. You can find those reference. Make sure you, you let these steps go through your own fingers mindfully. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, I'm gonna refill my cup. I will be right back. Okay, I'll be right back.
All right, guys. How's it going? Do you guys are you guys ready to contribute your answer? We have power rule, right? We have power rule. Anybody's ready to contribute? Log one over thousand, uh, square root of 1000, right? So if you think of this property, excuse me, okay? B raised to the power of negative one is one over B. Right, so let me make the fonts a bit larger. Right, so B is root 1000, right? So this here, you have root 1000. Okay, so that is your root 1000. So maybe you should even put in a parenthesis, right? So we're gonna use this form, we're gonna use this form. Okay, and keep going. Now you can you can bring the negative sign. We can use the power rule, right? We can use the power rule. All these flexibilities you have, you, we have, right? You can use them. You can use them. We can use them. We can totally use them. We can totally use them, right? So you can see the power rule can be used, right? And here we have log, that's a common log. And A is that uh, one th root 1000, right? Root 1000. So you're applying that property, right? We're applying that property. Oh, how did I get that? We don't need that, sorry. Uh, some symbols is automatically added to it. Wait. I think the software has some issues. Okay, so now this is better. Well, what's going on? Okay, so I'm just showing you how you apply the rules, right? So this is gonna be negative one. So this is a C is negative one, right? So C is a negative one. What's going on here? Okay, so this is negative one. So here's negative one, right? If it's negative one, you can, you can skip it, right? And our, uh, our capital A is the square root of uh, 1000. You guys see that? Right, that's a, applying the rule, a, applying the power rule. So after we apply the power rule, and that's what we have. And of course, we can reduce it even further. Ah, I think we'll try to make them in the same line so it doesn't hinder my other. Come on. Come on, guys over here, maybe because my font is a little too large. Okay, so this is better. Okay, you can see apply power rule, all these different properties about power, okay? And I'm, but this is not over. We can do it, we can do further. So how we can do further? Well, root 1000 is really 1000 to the power of half. So we can, we can bring the power half, we can apply the power rule one more time. We can apply the power rule one more time. You see, we can apply the power rule one more time. And this time, of course, it's still common log, right? Still common log. And the, a, the capital A is 1000 and C is one half. C is one half, right? So the one half is moved to the front, 
and capital A is 1,000, right? C is 1,000. So you bring the half over, and that's going to be negative half and log 1,000. And we can keep going, right? We can keep going. I know some of you might get the answer much sooner than mine. I will show you other ways to do it, okay? So one half, right? Log 1,000 is really log 10 to the power of three. And then you can bring the three down again. So apply power rule one more time. So this time you get negative three half log 10 and log 10 equals to one. So the final answer is negative three half, right? And then you say, well, this is too long. You're doing layer by layer. No, you don't have to do what I did, okay? You can totally, okay, do, do it any way you want. Just make sure you justify every single step. You just need to make sure you need to you justify every single step, right? For example, here, I can totally write it as 1,000 to the power of what? To the power of a negative one, right? And inside the power, I'm gonna write it as 1,000 to the power half. Right? And inside is 1,000, I can write it as 10 to the power of three. Right? So you multiply these three powers and you're getting log 10 raised to the power of negative three half. And in the end, you're gonna get negative three half. Okay, so what I'm showing you here, there are different ways to do it. There are different ways to do it. Okay, there are different ways to do it. So let's look at number eight. Anybody would like to contribute what you got for number eight? Anybody? No, Ellen, got any contribution, any sharing? Are you guys are ready to still working on it. Okay, you want some more time to work on this? I'm gonna have a sit. Be, um, be sure that you watch these recordings. Okay, these recordings, of course, you know where, where they are. When you review, get started sooner to review and uh, watch the recording there in Tech Connect. All the recordings for the, for the, sem for the entire semester are there. And, uh, but how do you find those specific topics? I think the way to find those specific topics is that because our quizzes are related to those dates. So if you look at the due dates and you can figure out which recording is closest to your, the topics of your interest, okay? The topics of your interest. And um, yeah, try that, try that. So log. So in this case, okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna move forward, okay? So in this case, you, your product rule is most straightforward. So you have 8,000 multiply one eighth, right? And then you get log 8,000 divided by eight is 1,000. And we just work with it and that's gonna be three. Okay, it, it doesn't have to take three steps actually. You can 
you get it sooner you can. And another way, I'm just gonna show you quickly another way. Okay. Another way you can do this is you can uh, you, you can do you can see this as log eight times one thousand, right? Ten to the power of three. There are all these different ways to enhance your uh, and you can use a quotient rule here, log one minus log eight, right? So over here, then you can see the flexibilities you have log 10 to the power of three, 10 to the power of three plus log one is zero. So that's a zero minus log eight. Log eight, you have to use a calculator, but we don't want you to use a calculator. So you just leave it there, right? And you see log eight positive and negative log eight. So these two will reduce, make it zero. So log base 10 to the power of three, that's gonna be a three. Right, so you have all these different ways to work it. And uh, so when, when you watch the recording, make sure if you need to pause, to pause the recording and watch it again, again. So hopefully this will, uh, ultimately you need to be the master of these topics, okay? You're, you're following classes. I don't, I believe most of you would take in uh, Mass 80, you're on the STEM track. You need to master these properties before you can take calculus class. And of course, along that way, you need to learn trigonometry. You need to master all those, those things in uh, you know, trigonometry, okay? So in this one, you just, the fastest way you get it, of course, everybody would do it that way, right? Quotient rule, you apply quotient rule, right? You know quotient rule can be used to for product rule or quotient rule. You can do it left to right, right to left, right? So this will give you nine. So this will give you nine. Okay, and log base three, nine, that's equals to two. Because, because two power three equals to nine, okay? Last one, last but not least, Okay, I want to give you some time. We can take a break and then we come back to do the review session. Okay, so I'm, tra I'm chugging along a little bit fast here. And in this case, you can actually use log product rule. So you have 35 times one sevens times two times two. Okay, and then what do we get? You have log 35 times two, uh, 35, div uh, 35 times two, that's 70, 70 divided by seven, that's a 10. So in the end, you're gonna get equals to one. Okay, so that's, that's all the questions we have for, um, for alpha 61A. Okay, so feel free to watch this process. Okay, uh, let me get you write it down. What do we have done? Okay, number nine, number 10. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm gonna get you guys to take a break. I'm gonna take a break for 10 minutes. And back, after we come back, we're gonna review. Okay, I'm gonna review for you for the entire semester and hopefully you will work it throughout the courses for this, for, you know, over the weekend and come back on Monday with your questions. And we're gonna, we're gonna work some more details. we we'll work some more details. On a Tuesday, the exam will be available, okay? Um, <clears throat> And you work through it uh, until you know the uh, the end of the day Friday. Okay, so let's take a break for ten minutes, and we will come back. Okay, so come back at eleven. So let me write down the time. We're gonna come back back at eleven thirty-three a.m. Okay. 
So come back by then. So we'll be doing the review. See you later. All right, guys. Review. Okay, I can see that um, you're gonna have questions and I welcome them. So I have your question when you, when you review, always gather your questions, okay? Uh, so when we review, we're gonna do it backwards. Okay, the material that we cover the latest will be reviewed first. Review for final exam. Okay, everything we cover this semester will be covered. And the first thing, the last thing, we, the latest thing we covered, of course, was the logarithm. Logarithm will be on the exam. Okay. As I promised, you're gonna have an extra credit quiz this week. Okay, you're gonna have an extra credit quiz this week. And you will also have extra credit opportunities on the final, okay, on the final exam. All right. So now let's look at our what we studied this semester backward. Okay, review for the final exams, right? Um, we have we have um, all these product rules. Right, and we also pointed out those mistakes, right? So if you look at the notes, so please look at the notes. Look at the notes. Okay, so please look at the notes. Okay, so we're gonna flip the pages backward. Okay, 61A. Okay, so alpha 61A. We're not doing the Bs, okay? 60A, 60A. Fifty nine A. Okay, we have we have covered those sections. We have examples fifty eight. Okay. Alpha 58, alpha 57. Okay, these are very important sections that we have covered. Okay, and uh, 58, uh, 56, of course. Okay, we have done all these sections. We've done all of these sections. 55A. Fifty-five A. Okay, any section we covered in class will be, um, you know, you would expect them to be on the exam. Fifty-four A. Fifty-four A. Okay. So another section, which we pointed out the mistakes, right? All kinds of popular mistakes of logarithm. I wish to take you guys, because I do have a section that addressing those issues. Okay, I do have a section that addressing those issues. Uh, that's, where is it? I have them somewhere. Common mistakes. I should have that section. Okay, I, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it for you, and then, then I will point it out to you. Uh, those are the sections that are addressing to the common mistakes. Okay, hold on, I'm going to find it. Huh. Is it 
possible. I took them away. Okay. No big deal. I, I will find, I'm going to get, I'm going to put it right here. Okay. That's a summary of, uh, I, I do have those materials right in front of me. And uh, I'm just going through this file and I was be specific because we did all of that about the common mistakes, which is very, very important. Very, very important. Okay. People, students make those mistakes and, uh, I'm gonna put it right here, okay? I'm gonna put it right here. So you can go to review those lectures, which is uh, in recent weeks after spring break, okay? So you will find that, uh, you're gonna find those uh, you know, mistakes and go through those sections. And here I have the summary. Ah. Okay, so don't worry, I will find it. Okay, so here, common mistakes in logarithm. Okay, so here I go, I found it, okay. Those set of mistakes, okay. All these, okay, I'm gonna write it down here. And of course I copy from another source and I'm, I will modify, okay. Uh, th this mistake is about log base B. Okay, you are, we, we have done this. Okay, we have done this. It's not something new. So capital A plus B equals to log base B. Okay, we see these mistakes in its various form and they are going to show up on your exam for you to identify. And we have a quiz on them. Okay, we have a quiz on them. Okay, so subtraction, subtraction, and, uh, and this other mistakes. Okay, log base B, we, we saw, we spent a lot of time here. We spent a lot of time here. Okay, log base B of capital B, and the right-hand side is a log base B. Okay, so if you go back to those sections, okay, those lectures, we pointed out this is a mistake and all of these are false, very common mistake, very common mistake. Okay, that's a common log. Okay. And we also pointed out even more mistakes. And if you go back to the sections and those quizzes, okay. And uh, so please go back. These will be quiz. This will be on your final exam, okay. I'm not joking. All seriousness, okay. Please go back to those sections to review, okay. There's more. There's more to it because we, we apply these mistakes to different forms, including LN, including LN, right? So all of these applies to common log, LN, right? LN cases. Including common log. Okay, so that's that's redundant. That's redundant. So there are all these different forms. Okay, go back to the sections and they're gonna be on the exam. They're gonna be on the exam, okay? So that's the logarithm. Logarithm, uh, these are the sections you need to review, okay? So now let's look at the next, the next part, right? So logarithm is one, one topic. 
And the next important topics is uh, let's go back. Okay, passing logarithm. We pretty much go by the order. We pretty much go by the order, but certain sections. So I, I, I list them there because certain sections are not covered. Okay, so that's the logarithm. So next topics, I'm gonna to put it on the top is the solving equations and factorings. Okay, equation solving and factorings. Okay, so I'm, I will tell you exactly the sections we cover. Okay, equation solving and the factoring. Okay, so that's the next part. Okay, the next part is, so the sections you need to know, say alpha 52, 51, 50, 49. Okay, these are sections if you see them on the homework sections, 48. these sections, uh, 47, 46, okay, factoring trinomials, then what works, what are the ways that it works all the time, right, we talk about those techniques of factoring, 43, 42, 41. So I'm basically enumerating your homework, really. Okay. And your homework is much related to what we have done in the lecture. So now 40. Okay. I just, I just want to be super clear with you guys. 39, 38. Okay. So that's the last piece. In this piece, in, in this part. Okay, so this is equation solving and factoring. Okay, and this piece actually has something to do with the quadratic, which we're going to review as well, right? Uh, but I'm going to go by the order. I'm going to go by the order. Okay, so this piece has something to do with, uh, has have something to have something to do with the quadratic. With quadratic functions, okay, because in a lot of the cases you end up with the quadratic functions, end up with the quadratic functions. So equation solving and factoring, F F A C T O R, sorry, T O R, factoring, right? The next one is power, power rules. Okay, the power rules, power rules starts the sections, uh, what, what are the power rules? The power rules, you probably, if, if I review them, you, you would be very familiar, right? Such as a B raised to the power of M multiply B raised to the power of N equals to B to the power of M times uh, M plus N and so on and so forth, right? So those, and also connected with uh, uh, also connected with logarithm. Okay, it's also connected with logarithm. Okay, b to the power of zero <clears throat> equals to one, provided b is not equals to zero. And uh, these rules. Okay, so a over b. Oops, okay, A over B. These are the rules where uh, we're addressing. A to the power of N divided by A to the power, uh, B to the power of N and multiply. Okay, so multiply. Okay, so A times B 
to the power of n equals to a to the power of n b to the power of n. Okay, and be aware, be aware that the power rules are related to are related, sorry, related to logarithm, which we have addressed those situations, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, in the section of logarithm. So in terms of power rules and say, uh, you know, there, I, I'm, I'm trying to list them all here. So you won't, uh, you will find those sections, you'll find those sections, okay? Uh, so I'm going to put this over here, so make this more compact. Okay, did I leave anything out? I think I might have, uh, yeah, I, I might be to the power of M and then raised to the power of N is equals to B to the power of M times N. Okay. Uh, I think that's all we have. Did I, well, there, there are other forms. There are other forms, right? And there are other forms, so maybe you, I don't think you need more. This is, this is sufficient. This is sufficient. Power rule. And these questions will be related to, say, alpha 37A, right? If you go through the quizzes, if you go to quizzes, which I will make them available, uh, the, including the answers, right? The, the answers to you. And that will be another source of uh, a good review is you definitely want to look at you, those quiz questions and their answers. What we have done wrong when we were taking those quizzes. Each quiz is, is given based on that, based on the lecture in that week, in that week. Okay, so you're gonna find those and 30, 34A and 33, right? So this, this piece is about power. It's about power, related to these powers, okay? The power rules. Now, the next piece, I would say is a quadratic, okay? Quadratic. Quadratic were the big topics. Quadratic. Everything quadratic. I try to give. I tr I, I I think the title was a little boasting, but but I but I I I also think it's not boasting because it's it's a very comprehensive coverage of quadratic. We did a horizontal cut, a vertical cut, a larger than zero, larger, uh, smaller than zero. So we have a, this is the section I'm most proud of that our coverage of these sections is very comprehensive. Of course, it has something to do with uh, factoring that comes later, we, we, we just reviewed, but it's a quadratic in a nutshell that you can see all these different aspects of it. Okay, so I'm going to point to the sections you can study. Uh, one is a 32A. Okay, the last one is alpha 32A. Okay, and prior to that, right, we have this quadratic. Oh, we're, we went crazy about quadratic, right? So quadratic from we have all these exercises. We, we, we were here for weeks, right? We were here for weeks, open up, open down, touch x-axis uh, once, touch axis twice, uh, touch axis no times. So we have covered all these cases, all these cases from alpha 19, okay, through, Alpha 32, these exercises, if you understand thoroughly, 
okay? If you understand them well, it's gonna serve you really, really well. It's gonna serve you really, really well. Uh, so go back there, really go through those lectures if you need to, to how we done vertical cut, horizontal cut, and the meaning behind it. Uh, we, uh, I think I have a very thorough coverage of it. But if you have any question, okay, if you have any question, okay, after this weekend, pl please bring your question to me, okay? Please bring your question to me, okay? I'll be very happy to answer those questions. Everything quadratic, right? So we have discussed this function. AX squared plus BX plus C, where A is not zero, right? Every aspect of it, okay? The cases, right? The curve, we, we, we address this as a function, right? F of X, right? Process X axis twice, right? F, F of X across it X axis once. And number three cross no times, okay, no times, three cases, okay, opened up, opened down, okay, opened up, open up, open down, we have all these cases discussed, open up, open down, opened up, open down, okay, we have all these cases in these in these exercises, okay? And how they're related to B squared minus four AC, okay? B squared minus four AC. Okay, later in the factoring section, when we, when we, when we come to factor trinomial, we also encounter B squared minus four AC. So in this case, it's larger than zero. And in that case, it's equal to zero, touch once. Right? And in that case, it touches no time, less than zero. Okay, very important. Okay, so we, we see all of those cases. We'll see all of those cases of quadratic. Okay, so this is that summary in a nutshell. And the other situation, okay? If statement, right? If statement, if statement, if statement, okay, the if statement. The if statement say, oh, if it is equal to zero, right? If it is equal to zero, right? If it equals to, uh, say it equals to whatever number you want it to be, equals to one, equals to two, negative one, and so on and so forth, right? Etc. We have discussed those cases. And if it's larger than zero, right? If it's larger than zero, this is uh, alpha 32a, right? Solving inequalities. And if um, less than zero, uh, less than zero, et cetera. Okay, so the, we have discussed these cases. And of course, for number uh, for alpha 32, we also have, okay, in addition, okay, in alpha 32, A, we have also dis discussed about how to solve quotient, right? Those cases, they're not entirely all quadratic. They're, there's some quotient cases, right? So we have the case of if uh, something divided by something else is larger than zero, 
um, you know, smaller than zero, right? Larger than or equal to zero and uh, less than equal to zero. So number uh, out of 32A is very uh, inclusive of a lot of different type of questions. And at the, at the heart of the ideas, the big title, the big capital letter ideas, right? On all of these if statement, right? We get to use principle number five and principle number six. And the whole factoring idea, the whole factoring idea, why we do factoring? Because when we do factoring, we get to use those principle number five and number six, right? So this answers the question, why we do factoring? So this is the big piece. This is a big piece in our study, in our study. Okay, so this is one important uh, section. Okay, we cover that primarily from before the spring break, timeline-wise, okay, before the spring break. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Nice. And, and, and the other things is in preparation for our, for our, you know, there's some preparation, right? There's some preparations for an algorithm. I'm sorry, for a quadratic, right? So what are the, what are the preparations for a quadratic? The prep exercise. Remember we did a completing squares and all of that stuff, right? So the prep ones are uh, alpha 18. Okay. Uh, Okay, and alpha 17. Okay, so alpha 17, we address that's when the, when the parabola opens wider, more narrow, or flip over, and shifting up, shifting down, shifting left, shifting right. So we talk about those issues, right? So alpha 17, 18, those preparations, especially alpha 17 is a draft is addressing those L aspect and those shifting ideas, it, we get to use them in exponential functions and uh, logarithm functions as well as we, do, as we did the graphing later. Okay, so, um, and now, so that's the preps. The next piece is solving absolute value solve absolute value inequalities. Solving absolute value inequalities. So that's the next piece. Okay, so you see these exercise on alpha 15. Okay, that was the last one, 14a. 14A, 13, 13, 12A, 12 okay, so 12A, 13, 14A, 15, and 16A, 16A. Okay, so these are the alphas. Okay, so these are the sections we have done uh, we have those summaries, right? We have those summaries in those sections. Just to refresh your memory, uh, about that uh, summary. Okay, so let's make one less column. Right, so we, we use the example of 
uh, absolute value of a baloney, right? Uh, less than less than one, right? And uh, larger than one. Maybe we will we'll also include equals to one, right? So we, we have those, uh, we have addressed those issues with the graph, with inequalities, in say in this case, uh, so the omega is going to be uh, larger than negative one, uh, negative one, smaller than one. And this case will be omega is less than negative one or omega is larger than one. Okay, there's a graph in those sections, so which I'm not going to uh, repeat. If you have questions, you know, when, when, when you come back after you watch the lecture, so this would be the case that equals to um, plus one or minus one. Right, so these are the three cases, basic cases. And of course, you also have other cases, right? What are the other cases? What are the other cases? For example, you may have omega, right? Larger than a or, or larger than or equal to a negative number, right? And you may also have omega, right? A less than or less than equal to a negative number. I'm just I just use negative one for example, right? It could be negative two, negative three, and so on and so forth. So these are the other cases, right? They are all included in this part. In this part, okay. Absolute value inequalities, but I included the equation along with it okay, so for our comparison. So that's alpha. Uh, we've done a lot. We've done a lot. Okay, so 12A, right? Um, and, and then the next part is about the three types of equations, okay? Solving the basic three types of equations. Okay, where do you find them? Okay, we, we did them as uh, some beginning of the semester, one of the uh, the basic uh, one of when you see everything is 11a. Okay, prior to 11a, we have we did some preparation, right? That's alpha 10, right? Alpha 10 and alpha 9, 8, 7. Okay, alpha 7, 8, 9. So these are preparation for alpha 11, uh, 11a, okay, so that's a section. So that's another, that's another section, okay. So, so we, we gather those questions that that's what it's about, okay. In preparation, in preparation, right? So at the beginning of semester, we talk about uh, these functions, Right, so these functions, so alpha, so that's the three types of equations. Okay, you need to know how to solve them. You need to know how to solve them. And next, we have this alpha five, alpha six, and these are all prep, okay, to pre preparing, uh, say for example, alpha five, six, Right, these questions are really preparing us for, uh, for our work. For example, and also, we have this set of exercises we did all together, which is called Alpha Four. Okay, Alpha Four. Alpha Four. We have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, six functions. On the, for these six functions, for the six functions, we graph them, we talk about the rules, x-intercept, y-intercept, we have done all of those. 
That's very important. Okay, because everything else, you do transition, shifting left, shifting right, they're all based on these functions that we talk about in this semester. Okay, so that's also laying the foundation kind of thing. And you should expect questions. You should expect questions from these area. Of course, you're gonna, you've seen finally, uh, you have seen middle midterm exam, right? So look at midterm exam for your review as well. Now, the last topics, the last topics, the word problems. Okay, this covers, okay, it's from alpha one to alpha three. Alpha one to alpha three. Alpha one, two, three. Okay, alpha one, two, three. Will word problems show up for your final exam? The answer is yes. Okay, the answer is yes. Okay. And, uh, and I think that's all. Last but not least, the most important part, what we did at the beginning of semester, the six mathematical principles. The six mathematical principles. I'm going to use exclamation marks and all. Okay, they are so important. They're so important. Are there questions about them? Yes. Okay, and the other one is truth table. And or. And I think that's all in terms of uh, review contents. I think I have, uh, we have reviewed all of them. Okay, so let's go from beginning to end. Okay, let's from beginning to end. Okay, do you guys have any questions? Okay, feel free to ask me questions, okay? Feel free to ask me questions. So now we have go from the end to beginning. So let's do from beginning to end. Okay, let's do from beginning to end. Mathematical principles is the first thing we addressed and we talk about the truth table. Okay, very important. From quiz number one, quiz number one addresses mathematical principles. And some of those questions will make their way to the final exam. Okay, truth tables being quizzed and some of the questions will make their way to the final exam. Word problems we have uh, worked with, we talk about those lectures, right? The six functions we graphed, right? We find intercepts and so on and so forth. And alpha six, those, you know, perfect squares and related to absolute value. And those things are also in, uh, in preparation for ladder materials. The three types of equation. What are the three types of equation? Absolute value, root, and squares, right? So the basic types, the basic types is absolute value. Okay, say e equals to two. The other type is the square root of baloney equals to two. Okay, two is just, a, just an example. You can be given any number. And thirdly, it could be, um, you have a baloney squared equals true two, right? So these are the three types. One, two, three, three types. So you see that from alpha seven, eight, nine. And there are special cases I special cases. Special cases could be that this is a negative two, this is a negative two, this is a negative two. Those cases are also covered in these exercises. Okay. And other special cases could be that they're equal to zero. 
right? You have those exercises as well. So all the cases are covered. All the cases are covered. Okay, so from beginning to end. So let, let's look at those. Solve absolute value inequality. We have the graphing, we have the inequalities, right? Other cases. Okay, this is the piece that we saw a lot of mistakes in the past. We saw a lot of mistakes. And I saw I I saw these mistakes even in my calculus class students. I'm not joking about it. True. Across the campuses. Okay, I only I only teach at El Camino, but I taught at other schools many years before. But I, I talked with other faculties who are still teaching at other schools, even at four-year schools, all kinds of mistakes related to absolute value, which I have addressed them when we were doing the lecture. What we do. So go back to those lectures. I hope it would be really helpful. I hope I think it's going to be really helpful for you. Okay. So next. Next is the, the, the quadratic piece, the everything quadratic. I cannot emphasize enough. If you don't know everything about quadratic, you really haven't taken, you haven't taken math eight. Okay, you haven't taken math, math eight. Okay, all those different aspects. And alpha 32, even though there are not as many questions because it addresses so many things that we have addressed about the principles, about the principles. There are only six principles. All six principles apply to everything we do this semester and they will apply to everything you will learn in the future. Okay, they're just that important. They're just that important. Okay, that's why we, we bring them up at the beginning of the semester, at the beginning of the semester. All right, so power rule, right? These power rules, uh, equation solving and factoring, these are typically elementary algebra material. These are el elementary algebra material. Okay, these are really elementary algebraic material. Some of them are related to the quadratic. I'm sorry about the type of typo. Okay. And last and the more and also difficult topics is the um, logarithm. Logarithm. I just I just switched the order and put a definition on top. Okay. So this logarithm section. Okay, let me write it down. Log rhythm and exponential. Okay, well, of course we didn't finish this part. We did not finish this part. Okay, we have part, you know, change of uh, base formula we did not cover. Okay, and things we didn't cover, we will not put them on the exam. But you will probably continue to study this depending which course you're taking. If you continue to take math courses, you get to use this. If your next course is a trigonometry, you probably won't be doing logarithm for a while, but once you start to take pre-cal, then you're gonna have to, you know, to learn these, to review these again, to review this again. Okay, so that's, that's all for the, in terms of review guide. So I'm going to, let's see. I'm going to put everything. Um, over here. So I'm going to make a hard copy. I'm, I'm not making hard copy. I'm going to make a, a copy of these review material and send it to you. Okay, so this is review for exam. So this, I would call it a review guide. Okay, review guide. So you, you, like, you guys probably want to have a copy of this thing, right? About your grades and the plan for next semester, uh, uh, the next week. 
and the review for the exam. So let me let me make that file for you right here, right now. So you have it in front of you. So this is the review guideline. Okay, I'm going to create a new file. Okay, I'm going to create a new uh, file. This is a new file. Review guide for final exam. Mass 80, spring. 2021. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it as a review guide. Okay, study guide for final. Okay, so I'm gonna send it to you right here, right now. I made a PDF. Okay, do you have any questions, please? So please feel free to bring your questions. You can ask me a question anytime. Anytime by I mean anytime. Okay, I'll I'll get your question the first moment I see it. So I'm going to close this file and still go back to here. Okay, that's still the lecture. Review guide is made. So let me see if I can. I'm going to attach that file. Okay. Mass 80, study guide for final. It's it's a send to you in the chat. Do you guys see that? Do you guys see that? Did you see that? Does someone respond to me? Are you guys there? Okay, good, thank you. Okay, I'm also gonna send it to you to Pronto so you will not miss it. Study guide for final. Attached. Study guide for final. Did you guys see it? Do you guys have any questions? If you notice there's any typos, which I have, which happens, you know, I have typos. Or any issues you have. Study guide for final. Open. Okay, sent. So you should receive them all in all three. Okay, in all three uh, platform. Okay, one is the the Zoom, the the Zoom chat, and the other one is inbox, and the third one is a pronto. So you can access them from your cell phone, from your computer. Uh, all these different ways, all these different ways. But most of all, you need to really study those specific sections, okay? So if I were you, review your homework. You've done your homework, right? Review your quizzes, review your midterm exams. We have a total of 20 
six quizzes. I'm going to give you one more extra credit quiz. Okay, one more extra credit quiz on logarithm, on logarithm. All right, and it's going to be available. If not today, it will be tomorrow. Okay. So your question is your turn. Your turn to ask a question or to ask questions, not just a question, to ask any questions about this, about the topics of this section of this course. Even if it's beyond this course, you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer. Alan, Francisco, Marcelo. Well, of course, you can ask the questions about today's lecture. Right, I, I went a little faster because I want to save enough time for the review. Over the weekend, when you, um, if you have any questions during your review in the weekend, right? Don't hesitate. Don't hesitate to reach out to me, okay? And by pronto, by inbox, okay? No problem, no problem at all. I'll text message, okay? You can text me. I'm not going anywhere. Okay, let's see, what did I hear? I hear a beep somewhere. There we go. I see we said we have chat message, message question. How many questions on the final exam? I'm sorry, I cannot answer that question because I'm not done preparing for the final exam. So I don't know how many questions. but you have enough time, okay? On the final exam, on the final exam, you have a total of two hours per sitting, okay? On the final exam, you have two hours per sitting, okay? You make sure, it's your responsibility to make sure your internet is connected well. You have three attempts. You have three attempts. And the highest grade is gonna be your exam grade, okay? So make sure, okay, you review well before each attempt. Okay, three attempts could be used up very, could be used up very quickly. Okay, and you will not have any extension. You don't have the whole weekend to do it. Okay, I hope I have emphasized this over and over again. You don't have the whole weekend to do it. You have four days from Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You have four days to, to do this final exam. Next question. Alan has no question. How about Francisco? Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions about the contents? Contents or the past quizzes? Do you have any questions on, on contents or past quizzes? No? Please look, please look, look through your notebooks. Please look through your notebooks.
on your past quizzes, do you know which one you did it right, which one you did it wrong? Okay, I'm going to have all these past exams, including final exam, open to you. They're going to be, they're going to be not, not for you to redo them, but look at the correct answers. Right, what do you have missed? Your responses. Okay, you get to see the right answer. You can see this only after, only up to Monday, okay? Because after your exam starts, you won't, you won't get to see them, okay? You won't get to see them, do you follow me? So now I have those exams and quizzes open up for you. No makeup quizzes, no makeup quizzes, but you can look at the quiz and you can see the correct answers. You can see the correct answers. Okay, up to the 7th of June, which is the last day of review. Please, we, we still have time, we still have a, a 27 minutes before the end of the class, okay? Do look at, uh, you're allowed to see your own responses on the past quiz and the correct answer, but this will only be available until Monday, midnight Monday. After that, it's gonna be the final exam. It's gonna be the final exam, okay? So I have two screens, so I may look pretty strange because so I'm gonna make that changes. Okay, so look at look through your notes, look at you, look through your questions. Come on, guys. Look for some questions that you might have. Look through your notes, please. Look, at, look through your notes, look at the homework. Look at the homework. I, wa I want to help you see some more concrete ways.
right? Look at each topics, right? Right now you have the review questions in front of you, right? You have those questions in front of you and you go to each section, you go to each section, right? There's, there's a collection of exercise there. So you look at them and you say, okay, do I know how to do this? Have I done this? If you've done this, you look at your homework when you look at your homework, you might say, oh, I'm not sure this is right or wrong. And that's the time you're gonna write down. And now you can ask me that question. Did I do this right, right? Take a picture of what you did and send it and load it up to Pronto. And load it up to Pronto. And then we can, you know, I, I'll be very happy to discuss that question if you've done correctly or not and show you the right way. If necessary, you might, you might have done just done it correctly, right? At least you get affirmation for it. Right? So that's how you study each section because we, we divided, we have, a, we have some concentrated topics we have some concentrated topics. And the other thing is that I don't, I don't know if you guys hear it. If you have missed some quizzes, the, the Canvas grading, the, the grades that you see from Canvas is not accurate, okay? Because those missing quizzes need to be, uh, need to be set to zero, which I haven't get a chance to do. And as a result, then your, your, your Canvas quiz may, be, may appear to be higher than your actual grade. And also with the, with the extra credit quiz, I'm going to assign you uh, to uh, either to what well, this weekend, and that is not a con considered. And the other one, there will be a final exam. There will be a final exam. Uh, the final exam has some extra credit as well. And those points will have to be considered as well. Okay. So that's why your final grades is uh, don't, don't determine your, don't be misled by the, the campus, the, the canvas grade. The canvas grade is not accurate. Okay. I have no intention to mislead you. It's just, uh, it, it cannot be accurate. Okay. Each section, each section. Uh, even though I will be closing the quiz, uh, all the quiz and exam answers, uh, but you will still have the lectures available to you uh, during your exam, during the exam, during the four days. Okay, during the four days, you can still go back to watch the lectures. 
Okay, so you can go back to watch the lectures for sure. Those will not be uh, removed from the, uh, so those will not be removed. Okay. How about the quizzes? You guys need to look at the, the quiz question, the quiz, which one you missed, right? Which quiz you did poorly? Look at that quiz, right? And you have you have your grade book in front of you. You say, hey, I didn't do this quiz, I didn't do this quiz, you know, well, right? What question did I miss? What question did I miss, right? I'm opening the quizzes, um, you're gonna see your answer and the, the answer, uh, the correct answer, okay? You're gonna see your answer and the correct answer. If your answer is the same as the correct answer, that's great. If your answer is not the same as the correct answer, what should you be doing? You need to find out, you need to find out what you have missed. What do you have missed? Okay. So now, at least for now, look at your quiz. Look at your quiz scores. All right. Those are closest to you. Those are the, those are the, you know, those are the elements that are closest to your grades. I check out every quiz score you have yet. And if you have any issues, right? And besides, and I may be making some mistakes, okay? Don't you want to find out? Okay, and now, since you're in class, I'm guiding you, okay? Let us let me guide you, you're not saying anything. Look at your quizzes, look at your quizzes. Which quiz that you think you could have done better? Right, a lot of the questions on the quiz will show up on your final exam. A lot of the questions on your quiz is gonna show up on your exam. Is that a good enough hint? Whether you have done the quizzes or not, if even you missed a quiz, you can still see the quiz. You can still see the quiz, right? You, you can you look up the right answer, wrong answer. Okay, so starting from quiz number one. Are you guys doing that? Please do that, okay? The amount of time we have in class is precious, it's precious. And I'm here to help you. I am here to help. Your question will not only benefit you, it's also going to benefit your classmates and people who are going to watch the recording. Okay, just remember that. Okay, just remember that.
Okay, now, by this time, all the quizzes with the, their answers are now available to you. The correct answer is available to you, okay? Put on your thinking cap, put on your thinking cap, okay? If I made a mistake, that's the opportunity for you to get more points. So by this time, you should be able to see all the, all the quizzes. You have a total 25 quizzes, okay? They're all open to you in terms of question. You, you, cannot get, you cannot redo them and get grades for sure, but you can look at the past quizzes Okay, the, the, your response and the correct answer. When you look at that, I'm sure you're gonna have questions. You're gonna have questions. I'm ready to take your questions. I'm ready. I'm ready to take your questions, you guys. Yeah, I'm ready. Come on, guys. Come on. You don't have questions. All right. Are you guys looking at the quizzes? And your homeworks, hmm? your homework, your homework. Good. Okay, so look at those, look at those. Did you do a perfect job on those quizzes? All right, did you do a perfect job on those quizzes? What have we missed? What have we missed? All right, well, if you don't have any questions, uh, maybe we can, we can end the class today sooner. You can leave. Uh, I'm still going to be here. I'm going to be here until the last minute, okay? But if you have any questions, please don't, don't go away. Don't go away. Or well, you're looking for that question, right? You're looking for that question. The other question I have for you is that, do you have the notes with you? You know, sometimes you, you know, material get lost in the semester, right? Sometimes the, the material get lost in the semester. You want, to, you want to locate them and I can help you to find those materials because I still have electronic copies of those notes, okay? You don't want to, Oh, when you study and then you find, oh my God, I don't have the, I, I lost my notes. 
I know with electronic copies, it's hard to lose the notes, but just in case, just in case, you don't want that to happen. Yeah. 